Somewhere in the middle of northern Luzon is a landlocked region less explored than its counterparts, but not at all less worthy of a visit. Nueva Vizcaya, a quiet yet naturally vibrant province in Cagayan Valley, best known for its 4.2-kilometer cave system, the fifth longest in the Philippines, wants you to know that it has a lot to offer. Yet many people wonder, what's there to do in a province with no beaches? The answer is plenty. Bordered by Benguet, Ifugao, Isabela, Pangasinan, Quirino, Aurora, and Nueva Ecija, what it lacks in beaches due to its geography, it makes up for in steep peaks, rolling hills, and a whole lot of land adventure. It is linked to the Cordilleras on the west, the Sierra Madre Mountains on the east, and the Caraballo Mountains on the south. Nueva Vizcaya's geographical attachment to the Cordilleras means it is culturally connected to the region as well, despite not being part of it. The province is home to 18 indigenous peoples, including the Isinai, Tuwali, Ayangan, Kankanay, Iwak, Kalanguya, Gadang, Dumagat, Ibaloy, and Bugkalot. While its Ilocano population was a result of a labor force migration during the Spanish period. Known as the country's citrus capital, Nueva Vizcaya is a major producer of pomelo, poncan, and oranges. Mostly located in Casibu, these sprawling citrus farms can be viewed from the main highway. Particularly at Barangay Malambing, guests are welcomed with a dance performance by the children and a hearty meal consisting of piniwak, sticky rice desserts, and sweet Satsuma wine from the Malabing Valley Winery. Being landlocked has its own advantages, as it is able to supply citrus crops and vegetables to neighboring provinces and Metro Manila via the sprawling Nueva Vizcaya Agricultural Terminal located in Bambang. Home to flower farms and vegetable farms such as the Cut Flower Farm, Vizcaya Fresh, and Department of Agriculture's Pick and Pay Vegetable Farm, Nueva Vizcaya is a province built on fertile soil, as well as a history of nurturing both nature and culture. The province is known for championing indigenous tribes through the annual Grand Amungan Festival, which originates from the Gadang word that means gathering and the celebration of IP Month, during which indigenous peoples from all over the province converge in the convention center in its capital, Bayumbong, for dialogue and celebration. The People's Museum and Library in Bayumbong, which has been declared an important cultural property by the National Museum and is the only DOT-accredited museum in Region 2, beautifully exhibits the vibrant and diverse IP history and culture in the province. Right across it, the St. Dominic Cathedral is an example of 18th century Filipino Baroque architecture and the first cathedral in the province. The symbolic juxtaposition of two structures, one a product of Spanish influence and the other a conservatory of indigenous cultures, showcases the province's depth of history and its immense value for it. A feature that is sometimes lost in the quest for development, but is present and thriving in the town of Bayumbong and across the entirety of the province. In Solano, preserved right on their original location, is the World War II cannon relic. While the shrine of Boong Jesus Nazareno stands as a testament of culture and faith. Yet another example of combining progress and preservation are the smoothly paved roads that lead to and through the mountains, caves, and falls which are among the province's most prized treasures. Always just a couple of hours on the zigzagging highways, 
are some of the most scenic destinations in Vizcaya. It's best for tourists to rent a transport service to navigate all of these destinations with ease. MM Farinas Travel and Tours, Nueva Vizcaya Transport Services Cooperative and First Novo Vizcayano Travelers Transport Cooperative are some of the options available. The Early Risers Reward is Vizcaya's own sea of clouds. Located in Binuangan, Lupax del Norte, the lookout point stands along a national road, landmarked by a bare hill that's actually the peak of the mountain. In Dupax del Sur, reaching Mount San Vicente view deck requires a steep yet paved 350-step hike. It starts with a cement trail that can either be traversed on foot or on a vehicle. The trail itself starts with a wide and muddy road lined with trees. A short trek through the forest and one or two streams eventually leads to a stairway that leads to the deck. Equipped with handrails, it's a relatively easy hike, which culminates with 360-degree views of mountains, forests, and rolling hills. The trail is located near the town landmark, San Vicente Ferrer Church which was deemed a national cultural treasure by the National Museum. Finished in 1776, it is older than other heritage sites in the country. Dupax del Sur has preserved many historical landmarks, including the old Spanish flagpole, the statue of Dupa, and Dampol Bridge, which is also a national cultural treasure. Two towns further from Dupax is Santa Fe, the only town in Nueva Vizcaya that borders Pangasinan. The town's main product is walistambo, or broom, made of tiger grass. There are many of these available at Santa Fe's One Town, One Product store and along Ratan Alley, together with other handmade products that are usually produced in the homes of locals. Santa Fe is the end point of the historic Balete Pass, which is a mountain pass that joins Nueva Ecija and Nueva Vizcaya. During the last stages of World War II, it was the scene for the infamous Battle of Luzon, where the pass served as a defensive position for Japanese forces. Balete Pass is the only victory shrine in the country managed by Philippine Veterans Affairs Office under the Department of National Defense. Commemorating the losses of war is the National Shrine of the War of Balete and other memorials located in Balete Pass Tourism Complex at the summit area of the pass. The viewpoint offers views of mountains and forests and is also a popular picnic and adventure spot with a zip line that courses through a thick forest. Lintungan Waterfalls in Quezon, Nueva Vizcaya is another worthwhile destination for adventurous travelers. Getting to the basin requires an uphill drive through a steep and narrow zigzag road and a short trek along the mountainside. At the end of a short downhill walk from the Welcome Shed is a view of the two-tier waterfalls running over a rugged terrain. The water is cool and clear and, during the summer months, is ideal for swimming. Despite the ruggedness of its surroundings, there are utility and information personnel, trained lifeguards, and concrete sheds and bathrooms in the area for the convenience of tourists. Those searching for the peak of adventure will find Nueva Vizcaya's Capisaan Caves, located in the municipality of Casibu, a real spelunking thrill. At 4.2 kilometers long, it is one of the longest cave systems in the country and also one of the most well-preserved. Dubbed as a geologist's paradise, it offers a breathtaking display of rock formations beyond stalactites and stalagmites. Traversing the entire system takes about 3 to 4 hours at best with the assistance of trained DOT accredited guides from the Kapisaan Caves Tour Guides Association. The cave system was first explored in 1990 and was open to the public in 2001. Following a rigorous process of guide training and management planning, 
the implementation of the DOT DPWH Convergence Road increased tourist arrivals, resulting in turn in increased livelihood for the locals. There are homestays located just a few meters from the site, as well as more local guides to accommodate the 1 is to 5 guide to tourist ratio. Jerry S. Larocco, a veteran provincial cave guide, shares his experience. In one month, I about 400 pag ganitong season, pero po yung peak season, inaabot po ng mga 1,000 po. Malaki pong tulong pag-improve kasi dahil sa maganda na yung kalsada, eh, naibababa na lahat na yung mga produkto nila. Then yung mga bisita is mas madali na silang pumupunta rito. Hindi gaya noon na talagang ang hirap talaga. Pag naglalakad din dyan, ilang oras talaga yung papunta ng alayan, then pabalik na naman dito. Eh ngayon, uh, papunta ka ng bungad ng Alayan Entrance 1, eh mga ano na lang, mga 10 minutes andun na ka, andun ka lang. Then, ano. Provincial Tourism Council Chairperson Ruth R. Padilla shares that the government of Nueva Vizcaya is focusing its tourism efforts on promoting its natural attractions and forest reserves apart from its several culturally significant areas. With uplands comprising 71% of the province, Vizcaya is also promoting its mountaineering routes as well as the preservation of its peaks. Basing on the statistics that were presented to us during one of our council meetings na since 2015, comparing 2015 up to two half of the year of 2019, talagang tumataas. It's increasing the number of our tourist arrivals as well as our excursionists in the province. And the many infrastructures going on, and once it is completed or they are completed, like our convention center and our conference building as um, located in our Lower Magat Ecotourism Park, I am very positive that uh, there will be more tourists um, coming to the province. Ecotourism, because we're also promoting mountain climbing. Because 71% of the area in the province is upland, and only 21% is lowland. Mas maliit na percentage yung along the national road, national highway, than what you see in the different upland areas of the province. We're surrounded by three big mountains, Sierra Madre, Cordillera, and Caraballo. That makes us so blessed, as probably you have heard about the calamity and uh, the baha in Cagayan. And every time there is a typhoon, Cagayan province and Isabela are really devastated, but blessed by God were always spared because of those natural big mountains. And we're truly the Cagayan Valley, so we are also promoting that. In fact, we have already trained mountain guides in uh, the uh, upland uh, towns of Cayapa, Ambagio, and Casibu. Kasi parami ng parami ang mga mountaineers na pumupunta. Because one route going to Mount Pulag is through one of our upland towns, which is Ambagio. We also have Mount Ugo, which is in the municipality of Kayapa. The preservation of Mount Palali, which is a part of the Sierra Madre mountain. The Nueva Vizcaya Alliance Club of San Francisco adopted the Mount Palali area. Now they will help preserve because they firmly believe that it is one uh, place where uh, we can also promote and be proud of, besides the other mountains that I mentioned a while ago. Lower Magad Ecotourism Park is a prime example of Vizcaya's nature preservation efforts. Located within a 24,000 hectare forest reserve that provides watershed protection to the whole northern and central Luzon, the park is a 1,000 hectare complex of 30 rooms, including cabins, cottages, and dorms, as well as picnic huts, campsites, boating, 
swimming pools, and a five-kilometer eco-trail. While the peace and quiet in the park makes it an ideal place for communing with nature and relaxation, its scenery and facilities also make it a preferred destination for bigger events, such as team-building conventions and weddings. In between spelunking and hiking, swimming in the rapids and marveling at the clouds, tourists can relax and recharge in the comfort of pit stops located along the highways of Nueva Vizcaya. In Solano, Balay Gloria, a hotel and spa in the city center, is a popular choice among travelers for its location, ambiance, and food. Its restaurant, Cafe Angelo, is always full and popular among locals as well. Also popular in Sulano is Caboodle Grill. Their specialty, boodle-style serving of grilled meats and fish. They encourage guests to eat with their hands. Highlander Hotel likewise serves delicious food amidst a grand backdrop of Victorian-inspired furnishings. Here, no two rooms are alike, but you'll always find the beds with a canopy and the walls matching the decor. Magic Pan is a cafe in Solano that serves breakfast, lunch and dinner meals at affordable prices. Perfect for the traveler on a budget. In Bayumbong, Lotus Garden Hotel, located along the National Highway, offers spacious, comfortable rooms for weary travelers looking for a good night's rest. Still in Bambang, Grill Hub is a popular lunch and dinner spot serving Filipino comfort food and other favorites. Stone 8 Farm and Restaurant, located in Aritao, is a quirky stop that's full of personality with a scenic view of Nueva Vizcaya Plains. The extension, which is a converted garage, serves as a function room for private gatherings designed with stones and wood elements that blend well with its environment. Mrs. Baker's Restaurant and Pastry Shop is, so far, the only fine dining restaurant in Nueva Vizcaya, making it in demand with locals and foreign tourists alike. Located in Bayumbong, many travelers regard it as a wonderful discovery for the excellent food, modern ambiance, and must-have desserts. To those retiring for the night in Bayumbong, Saber Inn is a popular choice, accessible and affordable. It offers accommodations for travelers on a budget. Those who wish to bring home a piece of Nueva Vizcaya have a variety of local products to choose from. Handmade items such as woven fabrics and native brooms, local delicacies and handicrafts are sold at the Pasalubong Center in Bayumbong. Citrus fruits along the Bayumbong Highway, Bukopay from Bukopay Alley in Bagabag, and Tupig in Solano and Villa Verde. From cloudy peaks to misty falls, to verdant landscapes and winding caves, Nueva Vizcaya, for a landlocked province in an archipelago otherwise known for its world-class beaches, stretches the limits of what the Philippines has to offer in terms of tourism and adventure. A community that appreciates culture, nature, and tradition. The Vizcayanos take pride in celebrating their roots and indigenous people, as well as in preserving the abundant earth on which it stands. More than just a stopover, Nueva Vizcaya as a destination holds its own and offers an experience that is exciting, authentic, and uniquely Vizcayano. <laughs>